Good evening, everyone. Ads here from Unity Trading Group. Welcome to your Tuesday night update. Usually we would be doing a live session tonight, but my partner in crime has a dinner date to attend. So just me tonight, I thought just to keep it a little bit more formal and uh, do the nightly video update that we all are used to. Uh, but uh, big moves for BTC over the course of this evening, uh, sorry, this evening, yesterday, the course of the last 24 hours, should I say. But um, as always, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you can, uh, share the video around if you find this stuff interesting and you think it will help others as well. You can find all of our links down below in the description. You can find us at unitytradinggroup.com also. Uh, but without further ado, BTC. So we've been observing Bitcoin and uh, we spoke about yesterday admittedly about a lower high scenario where we thought this 78.6 was even lower than that at that time. 78.6 would be the area that we would finally see or we would see rather a, uh, a level of pullback or level of respected uh, respected area should I say on the Fibonacci uh, retracement tool there at uh, 78.6 but we didn't see that we saw a a decent amount of volume come in and a push through that and through our level of supply which we are currently seeing uh, come to fruition right now also so we have eaten away this level of supply this supply has been into or sorry has been amongst the uh, the charts for quite some time if I continue scrolling to the left hand side so it was the final supply that we were looking at you know, at the top, pretty much at uh, that 19650 rather there. Uh, so we have pushed through that now and we are in uncharted territory in the way of BTC price action. So where to from here? Where do we go from here? Uh, if we are to obviously continue upwards. So what I'm going to do instead of preparing this chart uh, before I'm going to do it live or well, not live. I'm going to do it on the video for you guys So I'm going to get rid of some of the zones that we've had drawn in some of these levels I'll keep this one in just for now uh, Just to give us a, a decent base. I'll get rid of this trend line and I'll get rid of the I'll actually extend this one from previous because it is still being respected somewhat uh, So we'll leave that there And we'll have a look and see how we can really gauge uh, this price at the moment. So what we're going to do, we're going to use our uh, trend-based Fibonacci extension tool just to the left hand side. You can see that there. And we're going to draw from swing low to swing high and then back down to the retrace. So we're going to go swing low to swing high and then back down to our retrace. So that'll give us all of our Fibonacci levels which you can see quite respected. So you got the 38.2. We've got our 23.6 uh, on the left hand side there respecting a lot of that uh, price action to the left. We've got our 618, which is of course being respected there. And that's our next level of four hour demand at that point there, if we were to delete this one up top. So we'll, we'll leave that out for the moment. But the real thing that we want to look at right at this second is the levels above us. So we've got our, uh, we've got our one, so our one, so that's one and zero that we're usually used to, or zero and a hundred percent in terms of the, the Fibonacci retrace. So our one is at 20,006, basically that round psychological resistance of the 20,000 even level there. So pretty much at 20K, that's going to be our first line of uh, defense for the bears, pretty much at the 20K level, pretty much exactly. So we'll go 20K and we'll put that in there. So 20K is our first level that we want to look for. The second one would be the 1272 Fibonacci extension. This is our basically our 27 fibs or the 23 is what we're usually used to. However, we're looking at a 127 fib extension there on our trend-based fibs. So that's at 21. And of course, we've got the 168, which is the most respected area in my opinion uh, over the course of you know these trends playing out. If we're looking at the trend-based fibs, the 168 is the level that I usually look towards for a longer term uh, movement to the upside, if we're going to get that. So looking at these two levels uh, pretty much exclusively at this time. So we've got 20,000 pretty much even, which is not far away, admittedly, only about $500 away. And then of course, 22,350. Uh, which would be the next one above that, which is the most relevant level. So if you haven't used the trend-based FIB extension tool, 
uh, scroll back to the start of the video, have a look and see how I drew it in. So we're basically looking at swing low to swing high, back to swing, back to the retrace. So one, two, and three to give us that Fibonacci uh, extensions above the price. So what I'm currently looking at is 20K and 22.3K. Right now, are we gonna get there? We'll see. The next real hurdle for BTC is getting over that 20K. Um, on this four hour time frame, however, and if I get rid of this level of uh, supply at the moment, what we're seeing, what we're observing is there's a couple of levels that I'm really looking for. And uh, of course we can't draw in any supplies, but of course we can draw in our demand levels. So of course we've got the one just below here. So we've made a significant market pivot point down here at around this 16,800. And uh, just because I'm identifying some levels lower doesn't mean we can't get there, of course. So 16,800 and of course, just below that we've got our 16K. So those two levels pretty much can be merged into one in my opinion. And uh, we form a decent level of support at around that 16.5, 16 k mark whoops and of course we've got the level that is based around our 61.8 which is the final push or the final candle or the bearish candle before uh, our level to the upside and this really coincides very well with this 61.8 that's the main reason why i'm drawing it there because we've got our 618 fibonacci uh, extension point there and of course we've got some more levels underneath that are quite relevant like the 0.5 and the 38.2 which is at 17 uh, sorry 18.1 and 17.6 respectively so that's uh, going to be an interesting one over the next little bit if we are to, to really look at steamroller steamroller is quite accurate on the four hour time frame uh, on BTC as of late and it has been for quite some time if you go back and really back test even the overbought conditions on the four hour time frame they really give you uh, a decent indication on when we can be expecting somewhat of a pullback even if it's short-lived uh, steamroller still has been picking those levels so you can look down below and of course the circles that i've identified on the chart and we we have had some bearish reaction off those levels in the past. So I'm not discounting that at all in the way of our indicators. What we've got, what we're observing, is we're observing these uh, steamroller peaks uh, to, to give, really give us some exhaustion and some level to the upside. Uh, sorry, it's just to give us the exhaustion of the move to the upside, excuse me, and uh, see where we can expect those pullbacks. So if we are gonna expect the pullbacks, Obviously the 618 is the area that I'd be looking for alongside that demand level. And if we get something more violent, we'd be looking towards that 0.5 or the 38.2 on that Fib extension tool there. But not only that, we've got some bearish diversions forming on the CCI and that was terrible. Um, let me draw that in properly with a trend line. There we go. We've got some bearish diversions forming at that point where we've got uh, this sort of happening where we've got ascending price action and descending uh, CCI that are engaged, that uh, really suggests a little bit of weakness there. And of course, the same thing occurring on RSI. However, we've got a, a longer really sort of time frame for that. So the CCI is a little bit better in this instance uh, to give us that early indication of a bearish divergence uh, if we're gonna form one. But uh, in any case, we have really outdone ourselves in the way of BTC to an upside you know sort of potential where we we initially thought we were going to be caught up for quite some time at this 20k or this this longer term level of supply in which we have broken through now so we're looking at our Fibonacci extension tool for the areas to the upside where, we, where we're looking towards there is quite a number of them that uh, that come up there when you uh, draw the uh, Fibonacci extension in but of course that psychological round number of 20k really stands out to me if we're going to see some more movements to the upside in the immediate short term so I'd be looking towards that, of course, and looking out at our uh, levels in terms of our indicators to really gauge some pullbacks. But I'll be looking at those demands and those Fibonacci areas for now. Moving on, I will look at ETH and then I will have a look at a, at a request that is ADA. And then we'll have a look at the DXY to conclude. So Ethereum, Ethereum is doing quite nicely and it is respecting our level of supply really, really nicely at the moment. Um, what I'm looking for now is I'm looking for a pullback on Ethereum, the exact same sort of scenario that we're looking at BTC, but on a very shorter scale of things. So if I draw in the level of 
uh, fibs. We've got our swing low to swing high. This is our traditional fibs, not the trend based. And I've, I'm seeing a number of levels really appear on my chart to really gauge where we could go. So if I identify these levels, I'm looking at the 23 for a really short term. I'll probably get rid of that just for now. I uh, use the Fibonacci, but I would be looking at this golden pocket area, this 50, uh, to, one sec, I'll draw it in properly. This between the 50 and the 61. So we've got a really nice uh, area of demand between those two levels there. And uh, we usually call it the golden pocket. Uh, and I'd be looking towards that if we do get a, a, a larger retrace on Ethereum for the immediate term. So I'd be looking towards the, obviously the 38, the 50 and the 61, but this golden pocket, this 50, 61 area uh, does stand out. But I'd be waiting a little bit, a little bit longer in, in this instance for a pullback. I'd be waiting for some, a little bit of relief or some respected candles off this level of supply before we really look for downwards movements. So I'd be looking uh, towards this evening and, and of course into tomorrow morning for some areas. What I usually would do in this instance, I would personally be looking for areas to enter at around the 38, the 50, the 61, but I'd be look, probably setting some alerts uh, on some lower lows on the smaller time frames to really indicate if we are going to start moving towards that bottom area. ADA USDT is the next one I want to have a look at and the exactly the same sort of scenario that we're seeing on ETH USD uh, is coming to fruition on ADA USDT and uh, I have been trading ADA for quite some time as you all know if you've been following me in the discord for quite some time now uh, and uh, ADA has been pretty good to us here at UTG and we're looking at the same sort of levels here for ADA so I'm looking at a longer term swing low to swing high area and uh, we've seen the 23 and the uh, the level of supply there being respected for quite some time. In my real opinion here, this is going to be my opinion, uh, we could see ADA push through this and towards the upper bands or the upper levels that is 18, 19 cents. But in my opinion, it does need some more movement to the downside. I'll be looking towards that, uh, that first or second area, which is a 23 and the 38 Fibonacci to really give us that movement to the downside. Uh, it really comes down to how we're looking. So we're really in no man's land in the way of our indicators on the four hour time frame. And if I'm looking at a daily time frame as well, uh, we are quite overbought still. Uh, whoops, wrong one. Uh, we are quite overbought still on the daily time frame. We have had some really sharp reactions off these level of supplies and of course the, the levels of demand as we saw that wick come down and wick down to 11 cents before moving back up to around 17. So a decent swing if you're in the market for sync bids and stuff like that, but there's all the chance that we could move back up and to that negative 27 and of course that 22 level of supply at the top. But in my opinion or in my instance, I'm waiting for a little bit more of a pullback towards that 23 and that 38 Fibonacci uh, levels there that we see 23 and 38. The last one I'll have a look at tonight is the DXY. It is a little bit of a longer video that we're usually used to. The DXY is a regulated market and this is not financial advice, just ideas and opinions of Team UTG, but it has reacted in the way that I really expected last night. So if you didn't watch last night's video on the DXY, head over to our channel and watch yesterday's video. Uh, but what happened, what came to fruition last night was what we said. We were looking at this level of steamroller. So if we see steamroller down the bottom, give us that green signal down there. Um, that really indicates that the, the asset or the trading pair that we're looking at really needs a little bit of relief to the upside, even if it's short lived. And that's what we got. So steamroller is really nice and accurate. Uh, on all these uh, regulated markets. You can get our free trial at www.unitytradinggroup.com and uh, that link is down below in the description as well. So we do a 10 day free trial for Steamroller. So you, there's uh, no obligation to continue. If you wanna give it a go for a week or 10 days, then you can. But the DXY, where do I expect it to go? Uh, for now, we did get rejected on this negative 27. We didn't really close above it. We really just closed above it just briefly before opening and coming right back down to our level of demand. And this level of demand has been eating away for very, uh, very slowly, 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 but surely it has been. And I do expect this level to fall uh, for the immediate term. If we're looking at this negative 6.1 extension here on the Fibonacci, it's not looking great for the uh, the DXY right now. And I'm looking for some, some closes, some candle closes below this 6.1 to really gauge 
if we're going to descend further down towards our 90 one area that we've been looking at for quite some time there will be some noise in between before we get there of course uh, and we could have some movements to the upside uh, in between there as well uh, but in in any case in the longer time frame side of things i'm looking at 91 even for the vxy unless we get a, a violent change in uh, in market direction so unless we make a higher high i'm looking towards that zone uh, that trend is continuing quite uh, quite nicely uh, for the last little bit. So looking towards that 91. Thanks for joining us tonight. Of course, you can find all of our links down below in the description. Give us a like, uh, subscribe if you like, and uh, if you found all of this interesting and valuable. Uh, I'm Ads from UTG, and I'll see you tomorrow night.